Hi everyone, this is Duncan from the podcast Under the Stairs. This particular video you're checking out just now has the archival recording attached to it. The archival recording is from our podography, I think that's the term that we use, um, and it will feature reviews of movies that fall under the 88 Films Italian Collection series. Now, the vast majority of reviews we've done over the last five years have been in audio format and published on our RSS feed for the podcast. We are transitioning over to give you access to all those reviews right here on YouTube under a playlist. Now, we're doing that because we're about to do our first video recording of E88 Films Italian collection release, that being Tentacles. So there's plenty of opportunity to delve into the back catalogue of the reviews here. And if you like what you hear, then please hit subscribe on the channel, leave your comments below, and uh, check out the rich catalogue of over 1,200 episodes we have on podcasts under the stairs on any podcatching device or Spotify that you use. So stick around, enjoy the episode, and I'll speak to you very soon. Squads are in position, sir. Marksmen on all the rooftops. Developments? No, nothing new, sir. They're sticking to their ultimatum. So eat it. Why, are you kidding, huh? Not in the least. Now go on, eat it. So I'll eat it. <laughs> what? Yeah, go on, get her to shut her mouth or I'll shut it for her. Shut up, I said. Shut your mouth, you bitch. Shut up, put a bullet in it. No! <laughs> You know what we need to beat it? A special squad with the authorized backing of the law that can fight these bastards with freedom in their own backyard. How come you didn't knock off that son of a bitch inspector? Yeah, it would've been easy. But when I go for him, I want to be face to face. I'm gonna have that fucking son of a bitch puke with fright. <laughs> yes, and they're often valid, my dear. My God, Leo, you're so fanatical, you're blind to everything else. You're not helping very much, are you? Go ahead, Pugliana. Oh. <coughs> Look, Inspector, you give me a decent break and I'll make you a deal. I'll tell you all I know about Ferrander. Let's hear it. I know where Ferrander is. He... What's your name, man? Theodore. Ah, Theodore, son of a whore. Good to know you. What are you doing? No! Oh, let me go! Shut up! No! Go on! Oh. Hey, I think you lost this. What's the matter, Louis? Good to go. Shove it up your ass. Fight! Fight! Oh, oh, oh. Sons of bitches! Make it two and a half and you can touch my hump, huh? Okay? Come on, touch it. It's good luck, really, man. Thanks, anyhow. But I don't believe in those superstitions. Mm -hmm. Refusing to touch it brings bad luck. <laughs> this ain't baking powder. We've got you. Hey, wait a minute, that stuff ain't mine. That was put there by somebody. It was planted, I tell you. Yeah, you're gonna explain. Get the bastard! Go on! <laughs> yeah, go on, get this moving. Welcome back, ladies and gents. You've just heard the trailer for The Tough Ones. This is disc number 65 in the Italian collection by 88 Films. The blurb on the website says a little something like this. Umberto Lenzi, the legendary director of Cannibal Ferox, kicked off the Italian police film craze with this hyperkinetic, ultraviolet, brain-blasting action thriller. 
Maurizio Merli stars as an Italian dirty Harry punching and shooting his way through the sleazy drug, sex and crime infested cesspool of mid 70s Rome. On the trail of a sadistic, machine gun toting hunchback played by Thomas Milan, who was in Brothers Till We Die, which was also in the 88 films Italian collection, so there you go. Boasting a state-of-the-art 4K transfer of Lenzi's uncensored director's cut, the new edition of The Tough Ones includes an incredible slate of special features and a grindhouse version of the US Brutal Justice release. In this limited edition, the one that I have, ladies and gents, uh, you get the limited edition rigid slipcase with brand new artwork by Thomas Walker, a 40-page perfect bound book featuring an interview with Humberto Lenzi by Eugenio Ercolani, double-sided fold-out poster, disc one, uh, and a brand new 4K restoration film from the original camera negative. This one's features are a high-definition Blu-ray 1080p presentation of the film, English and Italian DTS HDMA Mono 2.0, English subtitles, an audio commentary with critic Kim Newman and filmmaker Sean Hogan, an audio commentary with Eurocrime director Mike Malloy, a standing out an interview with actor Cardo Solari, Bunk and Violence, an interview with composer Franco Miscalanzi, Men of Violence, a interview with actress Maria Rosario Miglio, a family affair, an interview with Maurizio Matteo Merli, Fast and Furious, an interview with stuntman Octavano Dell'Aquia, Buddy's Story, an interview with the composer Roberto Donati, Arm to the Teeth, an interview with director Umberto Lenzi, the alternate credit sequence and original trailer. On disc number two, you get the USA Brutal Justice Cut, presented by Grindhouse, and Aquarius releasing an appreciation by Mike Malloy. The technical specs on this one is it's region locked to region B, the audio is DTS HDMI mono, picture is 1080p HD 235.1, the runtime is 1 hour and 35 minutes, uh, languages are English and Italian, and subtitles are English as well. So yeah, hadn't seen this one before, um, knew about it purely because of Brothers Till We Die, uh, which was a title that we covered, what well, feels like maybe two plus years ago, which was one of the early Polizzi releases by 88 Films. Uh, so I was curious about this one, Umberto Lenzi, we've spent a lot of time with him under the stairs recently doing that Lenzi Baker box set, and then we kind of followed him through some of his giallos and then fully aware that he was an early adopter to the kind of police crime procedural thriller euro crime genre thing that the Italians kind of bastardised and made their own. Um, so yeah, I, I was aware of it but knew n none of the details at all. This is a, an earlier one in that genre. You know, it's coming off the tail end of of the, the big heyday of giallo movies. Giallos are kind of no longer in vogue by 75, even though Argento is about to release Deep Red that year and kind of reset the, the, the barometer. Um, what you are getting here, though, is a kind of first transition to a purely Italian version of the kind of the sleazy crime movies of, of New York and America and that kind of dirty Harry aspect. The difference here with watching the tough ones is our main our main copper uh, played by Maurizio Merli is pretty fucking reprehensible as the hero of this movie um he frequently oversteps the line he is accused of violence against you know the people that he is arresting when they are being non-violent plant drugs uh, general insubordination being a little bit gun happy a little bit fist happy and whilst he does things throughout the movie that certainly offset that, um, like hunting down a group of rapists and beating the shit out of them before kind of chasing down two of them to their death, it is still very much like you are rooting for a guy who is clearly doing the old Judge Dread I Am The Law scenario, and I don't know... I mean, that sort of shit does not age well. It probably aged fine in the 70s, but, you know, in the in the world that we live in now, that sort of stuff doesn't really fly. He's also... He's got the look 
and he's got the intensity. I don't necessarily think Maurizio Merli is great in this movie. He, very much like when you see a movie with uh, Jean Sorel, who, uh, you know, is a relatively versatile actor, but was never, like, an incredible actor, but looked like a leading man. Whenever he was on screen, whatever he said, you were like, oh, this guy's fucking, you know, this guy's legit. Look at him. I can't stop staring at his dreamy eyes. Maurizio Merli's kind of the same. Whenever he's on the screen, you feel like there's an air of confidence about him. But he's not really acting the way that someone probably should in this role, and he isn't given a great deal of depth or breadth even to his character. It is a fairly one-dimensional character, um, and he doesn't ever really... The, like, the kind of biggest crime about watching the tough ones is his boss reprimands him for all the bad shit he's done, and by the end of it, the boss is kind of patting him on the back for doing a good job, and that character hasn't changed at all. And I find that just a little bit troubling um you have uh thomas milan kind of playing a very similar role to what he did in brothers till we die he's great in this one he kind of starts off kind of all meek and you feel kind of sorry for him and the police are abusing him and by the end he is like an uber criminal and i, I kind of love that part about him he kind of uses his disability in a way to like completely encourage sympathy against you know uh, for him against the people that are doing bad things to him as he's perceiving them but at the same time is very ruthless um in fact just before the end of this movie he he uses that kind of the, the kind of puppy dog eyes and the, the hunchback that he's got to lure uh, an unexpected police officer in when to be honest and the only bit of this movie merely actually does the right thing and says maybe we can't kill this guy maybe we just arrest him and as he's he's kind of cop friend is leaning in um milan draws a gun out and shoots him in the stomach killing him uh so yeah i, I like those aspects it's it's got a great kinetic energy this movie like never really has any dim time there's not much to you know not, not much time spent with any of the characters families or any kind of over-the-top police procedural stuff uh, it's basically kind of jumping from one crime set piece and building up the next one um there is a really uncomfortable kind of rape set up in the middle of the movie and whilst it isn't like completely gratuitous uh, it is one of those things where you're fully aware that the times are a changing a little bit 75 in italy we're we're kind of getting away with more stuff than we probably could before and we are within spitting distance of like movies like cannibal ferox um, and cannibal holocaust in particular kind of just get really like unpleasant and grimy with 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 kind of the portrayal of rape in cinema so there's that aspect as well and um, it's shot beautifully the transfer in this movie is fucking legitimate i mean it looks stunning the 4k work they've done is incredible uh, for this viewing i watched both this version and the grindhouse presentation if i'm honest and this might be slightly sacrilege i preferred the usa brutal justice cut uh, it has a kind of more driving feel to it and i imagine if you saw it at that that point that's a that kind of presentation in the movie that probably stick with you the italian cut is much more in line with a lot more of those kind of like i say euro crime thrillers uh, police ateshi movies that you have kind of seen before scoring this one absolutely banging totally fits with it scores for italian movies tend to be really great but some of the police ateshi stuff is excellent of this time period like the three four years that it really started to grow in prominence you get some really cool kind of funky disco-y sort of you know uh, multi-instrumental uh, set pieces that work really well and the the kind of main theme for this one is a ton of fun to listen to as well this is like one of these collections where like i said before i didn't have this disc and shelled out the 25 pound to get the limited edition one even though like just the very nature of it not being in a white case and all the other stuff gave my eye the twitch and it, it stands out sorely and uh, against the rest of the collection like a lot of the newer ones do they're like 88 films are really into this kind of we're going to copy the arrow formula which means like you have a huge amount of this collection which all looks uniform and everything looks 
not uniform kind of looks like an eyesore if you've got OCD um, but I mean this is packed not only are you getting like I say two cuts of this but the uh, and I flicked on and off the the commentaries with Mike Malloy and the one with Kim Newman and Sean Hogan and they're great um, I, I you know I'll go back and check this through with with the full commentary on it for sure um, but it's all the other stuff you get, like the interviews are, are awesome. Um, it's really great that they managed to track down as many people from this time, well, from that time now, uh, to, to get those um, interviews in. And, you know, it's always weird seeing Umberto Lenzi in these 88 films releases now, because clearly they'd interviewed him like for a ton of movies before, and since he's passing, you're now getting these things posthumously, which is always a bit strange. Uh, this is a fucking great set, and it's an okay film. I'd, like, as the Police Teshi movies go, this one is fine. I don't think it's of the highest standard. Lenzi is a great actor. Uh, great actor. Lenzi is a great director. Uh, the kinetic work's awesome. Plenty of zooms. There's a zoom on tits for no reason except to being exposed. That's Umberto Lenzi. Um, but yeah, it's, it's kinetic. It's fast-paced. There's tons of action. It's really well shot. The story itself is, like I say, it's a bit bothersome, hasn't aged particularly well, and our leading man is fine at what he does, but he's not nearly as interesting as the criminal who he is up against. In terms of giving this one a grade, I'd give it a 3.5. I think there's there's a lot to enjoy here. I think if we were just rating the, the presentation of it, it would be a lot higher, but because we go in the movie... Uh, overall for this one I think if you've never seen it before this is a, a fun romp if you're into kind of Italian Euro crime movies um, it, it, it delivers a lot of stuff which will be refined within a year of this movie coming out they're, you know they kind of get it down the, the cops aren't as villainous as they are in this movie and you get a bit more of that but it's clearly one of these movies that's kind of setting out a template and a blueprint for how to do things and yeah things will pick up pretty quick after that so 3.5 out of 5 for the tough ones <laughs> 